back to another Take the Lead podcast. I am your host, Tara Chantel, and we're bringing you another bag talk session where we talk about that spiritual bag within. I have the queen, Candice. Candice, you do so much for the community, so much for the people, but I would love for you to introduce yourself to the listeners. Yeah, thank you, Tara. It is absolutely great to be here. Um, you know, we we just, we all got to work together, okay? That is that is something that I have learned through and through, especially with this past year. Um, so just for the audience, I am Candice Rucker. I'm an account executive at VSC. Um, and VSC is a public relations firm based in San Francisco. Um, and most people are like, what is public relations? I'm like, we just make people look good. Like, that's what we do. <laughs> just don't ask any other question. It's just too hard to explain. <laughs> um, but yeah, within the company too, I have a lot of other roles. Um, I help with the culture and recruitment and DEI efforts and mentorship and just everything under the sun just to make sure that we are heard. Wow. That is incredible. I love how you just keep it so simple. We make people look good. So how do you make people look good when they have a bad reputation? The good part about what I do, (laughs) I'm not going to speak on other people's behalf, but what I do, um, we work with startups, right? So these are usually companies and founders that people typically haven't heard of which is great um because that means they don't really have a bad reputation (laughs) that's amazing that's amazing what inspired you to get started in the public relations industry yeah it is it was a journey (laughs) so i i went to uci uc irvine for my undergrad and i got my degree in psychology so that you know, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to go and help people's minds. And then I was like, I don't want to get a doctorate. (laughs) So so then um, I just, you know, I got a full-time job working at my alma mater um, in the higher education realm. So I was, I was the program advisor for the part-time MBA program. And with that, it was just a lot of like events planning and making sure that people got to their classes on time, make sure they knew what they were doing. And I was like, okay, I need to do, like, I can't just be doing the same thing every day. Like I need so many different things going on. So then I found PR and I was like, oh yes, this, like no day is the same. I love this. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Can you walk us through like, how is it not the same every day? Like what spontaneous things usually happen? Oh man, <laughs> I can't even, woo. <laughs> so, I mean, in PR, especially because I work at an agency. So we have, I have, I cover like eight or so clients. So every client is different. Like I work in education technology. I work in um, artificial intelligence and machine learning. I, I just launched a client that was working in electric vehicles, like battery swapping, like no day is the same. <laughs> That is incredible, especially what stuck out to me is like the artificial intelligence. And I know we're like moving in towards that. What is your thoughts about artificial intelligence? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good, I think it's a good thing, especially because I know, you know, Google's announcement of like, we're not doing cookies anymore. I'm like, okay, I mean, that's going to really put a damper in a lot of my clients work. Like how, how, if they don't make money, how am I going to make money? (laughs) Um, you know, but I understand, you know, privacy is a very, very important thing and we all need that. So with artificial intelligence, I do think that'll really help our marketers and brands just get more accustomed to, you know, being able to deliver those, um, specialized advertisements and promotions to their, their customers without having to get all of their data. So I I do like AI. (laughs) Wow. You, you a whole black woman in the tech (laughs) field so how is that for you especially being a black woman in this demanding field that is not many of us out here that's doing yeah. what you're doing <laughs> yeah it you know it, it didn't it's funny because it didn't really hit me that you know there wasn't a lot of us until I got into it um, especially with last year, like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm relatively young. Um, so Looking good. Got so, <laughs> we got so much time ahead of us. We just exactly. get started. We, we just get started. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I didn't realize that, you know, we actually had a voice and I don't think I was given that voice until I started at my, my old, my, my prior agency. And then at VSC as well, you know, people, 
they came to me and they wanted to know what I had to say. They gave me a seat at the table and I was like, I have never had that before. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And I love how you're demanding other black women and just other voices to be heard as well, demanding seats at the table and investing into ourselves. How is that going and how is that process like? Oh, it is wonderful. You know, I... It is great um, working at my current company. I'm, I'm not trying to be promotional, so please stop me if I get there. <laughs> um, you know, working, so my my CEO is, he's a man, but he's a man of color. And I, in my entire full-time career experience, I've never worked under a person of color before. You know, so to, to be working with someone who understands the different nuances of being a diverse person in the tech world, especially in the PR world, that's a game changer right there. Because as soon as I stepped in the door at this company, he said, yes, you you have a voice. We want you at the table. What you got? And that's not even just me. It's everybody that works here, you know? And that's what that's the most enlightening part in my journey is that I'm able to project this voice, but also bring people with me. I'm like, okay, you, I know you like graphic design. So what you got to say? I know you like, you know, um, environmental crisis. What you got to say? Like everybody is given a voice at this company. Like everybody eats over here. Like, uh -huh. I'm like, I'll make sure you eat, you eat, everybody getting dinner, breakfast, lunch, everything. Let's go. <laughs> and that's what we got to do. We have to put each other on. It's really enough out of here for us all. So how do you uphold such an abundance mindset, especially not living into sca scarcity, like trying to gather all of us to eat at this table together yeah I mean for me it's you know I was always raised that everybody yeah I mean I didn't get here by myself right like it takes a village I everybody who who has helped me along the way and now I'm taking that lesson and, and wanting to help other people along the way right so and no matter what they look like everybody has something great to offer and especially our younger generation, because they're going to they're be the ones who's going to be leading me one day. And I want to make sure that they know how to lead me that one day. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. They got to give them those resources. Yes. And how you said it's really the generation Z. Now, you know, mm -hmm. they call us so many different names. <laughs> but generation Z, they are ahead of their time, like dealing mm -hmm. with this technology. I know. There's some things I'm like, how do you know how to do that? Like, I don't even, what? <laughs> so how important is technology playing in your field? I know you are in tech, but I, and especially just having like social media, how do you balance like a healthy life in social media and not having it be so consuming on your mental health? Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> I mean, because in so, you know, more more in depth in PR is that we have to be on top of the news at all times, right? Because especially if something happens, you know, like in the ed tech realm, that's just groundbreaking. I need to know about it so I can tell my client, hey, this person did this, you got to do better. In, in keeping my my mental stability with, with social media, for me, it's just, I just have like strict hours where I'm just like, okay, these are no-no zones. Like you cannot be on your your laptop your phone no working no social media no nothing and just pick up a book and just read just read for like an hour or two it's all good that is so key that is so <laughs> key i'm like we gotta start reading more like we really yes. gotta, because that helps with our mental stability that helps with so many benefits in life instead of mm -hmm. just aimlessly scrolling and not being conscious of it Exactly. And I mean, even then too, it's like sometimes when I'm reading, it gives me ideas on what I can do within my job and within my life. And it, it brings other hobbies that I didn't even know I had, you know? So it, it's really, really good for the mental health space. It is. It really is. And I know I read with your article just about with the George Floyd death and how that just amplified and like that just I feel like that shift all of us like that really moved mm -hmm. us. What did you learn from that whole experience with George Floyd? Well, for me, I think, you know, it was the it was the realest moment in my life where I was like, you know what, I am a proud black woman, period. You know, that is, Man. that is, like that. That, that's a full, that's a full <laughs> sentence. Yes. Like I am going to do whatever I can to 
to move in the in the right directions and get you know break those glass ceilings and do what I need to do and bring everybody with me mm-hmm. because this is not just a me movement this is a us yeah and when we all get on that <laughs> same wave of thought and not just thinking about I not thinking about self and just think about we in the community how important is that for you especially like moving towards a direction of having the unity in the community it is everything i mean and it, it's not even just within you know the black community it's when all diverse communities with you know the his latinx communities with the asian pacific american communities all of them because a lot of things are happening to a lot of people of color right now and if we all just band together and work together we could be great like we could really be great and that's all we need that is all that is really all we need especially like being on cold like cold like this i wasn't even aware of just the crisis that's going on in the asian community as well yeah it is it's you know and that's and it's heartbreaking what's happening and it doesn't it honestly doesn't make any sense like for what reason are we attacking elderly people of color like doesn't make any sense to me you know number one number two it's like we like, and especially because I've even seen it out here in my community in the Bay Area. It's that, you know, every person of color is out rallying to protect, you know, these elderly Asian people who are being attacked. And I'm like, that's what we need. That unity right there of all of us working together, banding together, making sure that we are all protected. We eat, we're secure, everything like that. That's exactly what I'm here for. Hmm. How you mentioned before how it takes a village it really does Mm -hmm. in staying a part of the community like that what have you noticed about some people just not getting on call with each other just not able to just truly get along with other people to move each other up yeah (laughs) I mean there's people out there you know and and it's it's tough, but it, at the same time for me, you know, if I come across a person who is just like, you know what, I don't really believe in what you believe in. I don't really want to participate with what you participate in. And, you know, I'm like, okay, that's cool. Let's, let's find a common ground at least so that we can work together towards something because something is better than nothing at all. It's no right or wrong way to just do this life. It really be so simple. I tend to like, I feel like as humans, we make things more difficult than it should be. We really do. It's because we overthink everything. <laughs> they, they ain't no reason for that. Just, just, you had a thought, just go with it. Just go. <laughs> How do you go with your first intuition? Like your first thought that goes through your head how do you trust your intuition? Oh man, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, for me, it's just like, I, I know at the end of the day, you know, my village and my, and God got me. Like that's, you know, if I, if that's my situation, that's why I'm like, this, this is what I need to do. It'll work itself out. It always does. And that's the other thing that people need to remember is that, you know, even in a tough situation, you gonna get through it and you'll come out on the other side much better than you were before. It really, it really is like those hurdles pain whatever obstacles that we go through it really is there to teach us a lesson it's no l's only lessons learned Mm -hmm. exactly that's just like chance to ever say you know i turn my l's into lessons that's what we do (laughs) but we sometimes just look at things so in depth and then that causes us to suffer when really right now in the reality of it we're alive we're breathing and we can just be happy right now I don't know why it doesn't take us like so little to just enjoy this moment it's always about the little things and I tell people that all the time you know because everybody has these grand ideas of what they want the world to look like or what they want their career path to be or what they want like one time they want to get married when they want to have kids all this kind of stuff just enjoy the little moments because those are the most important Oh my goodness. Like if you're not happy right now, you're not going to be happy when you get married. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. How are you going through your process, just trusting the journey and just giving it up to God? Because how you just are here right now, just with your agency working for black owned and just the pathway did you imagine your life to be like this i never thought i would be like i mean heck when i graduated with my psych degree i was like well this is it i don't know what's gonna happen next but we'll figure it out (laughs) that's a great way to be let's we gonna figure it out together Mm -hmm. i'm like i'm gonna just keep praying god gonna open some doors for me We, we gonna get there you know and he did and that's the thing is that's the crazy part in my journey when i started working at the higher education 
you know, department at UCI, I, I, didn't, I knew I didn't want to work there. Like, I was like, I don't know what I want to do. But then God, like, he, you know, he touched me. He made me realize that I have a creative agency that I could bring to that company at the time, which would help me move into my industry now. Wow. So how do you stay creative, like thinking about all these ideas and helping all of your clients and just staying fresh in the game? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of research. That's mainly what it is. You know, you just got to know what you're talking about. And even if you don't, just, just figure it out real quick. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's... And as I was saying before, you know, just reading gives me ideas. Watching TV gives me ideas. When I just, you know, go outside and people watch, I'm like, oh, you know, that's an interesting way that they did that or like conversation I heard. Like maybe we can phrase it like something like this. You know, it, it, there's inspiration in the entire world. You just got to look for it. Oh, wow. And it will find you if you're willing, willing and open to receive those ideas. Exactly. Like, that's the thing. You're open and you're able to receive all these downloads that's just being placed in you mm -hmm, definitely you just got open-mindedness and that that plays into the whole you know just live in the moment be happy with where you are because you know good things will continue to come bad things will continue to come but you know everything's gonna come and you're gonna be okay just be happy that's amazing i would love to know what advice would you tell your younger self because you just that was a good that's a good advice for your younger self but other than that like <laughs> what else would you tell your younger self because sometimes we how you said before we overthink we be tripping for no reason and mm -hmm. how you just said everything will literally be okay i think for me for my younger self is just to not depend on people so much you know, or not really care about what other people think about you. Because I was always just trying to be that it girl. You know, I was trying to be that girl who was like, oh yeah, I know Candace, like Candace is cool. Candace is great. Like Candace is cute, all that kind of stuff. But it's not important. Like I, you know, and now in my life, I've realized like I'm happy with who I am and I'm going to keep pushing to what I want to do. And that's why I've gotten all the success I've had. And I'm still humble about it. I'm not like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm on top of the world. Like I'm like, I still got a lot of work to do. You know, I know that. Mm, no, but you got to talk about it. You feel me? <laughs> like, I feel like sometimes as just being just kind hearted people that we are, we sometimes try to dim our light to make other people comfortable we gotta let people know all the blessings and the favor god has over us i mean i, I look i give my credit where it's due sometimes okay you know I'm, I'm walking around like yes i am candace rucker hello how are you you know but other times there are people who need the light more so i want to give that light to them too yeah wow that's beautiful because we really can all shine together like let's light up this darkness Exactly. And that's exactly what we're doing, especially like even at my company, just in every aspect of life that I'm in right now, like, you know, my volunteering experience and everything. I'm like, look, we all have so much light to shine. Let's let's do it. How And I always ask, I'm like, how can I help you to get there? What can I do to help you just, you know, fulfill your purpose in life? Tell me how and I will do it. That's really being of service. Mm -hmm. And that is the, that's really why we're here is to help <laughs> each other like this. Exactly. <laughs> I love your confidence and I love how you just own who you are. How did you get there to really like build up your confidence and indulge in self-love? That took a while. <laughs> it, it took me a couple years to realize, you know, I'm, I'm cool being myself and I think really it was just because of my mom you know her and I talked we talk every day still and we have for like seven years and people are like you talk to your mom every day I'm like yes I do that's my mama you, yes. know? you know and she just she helped me reach my full potential and, and you know always telling me about you know the word and God and making sure that I knew who I was just as my own person, not having to depend on other people, not having to rely on having a job or whatever sculpts me. It's just, I am me and just love that about yourself. You know, I'm weird. I am very, I love reading about octopuses. Like that's a weird thing, but I love it. And that's me. You know? that is, no, that is cool. <laughs> octopuses? Yeah, they are really cool. <laughs> no, tell me a fun fact, please. Cause they so slept on. My gosh, they are so slept on. They are the like one of the smartest marine animals out there. They are so smart. They're okay, okay. <laughs> Just like, I'm like, there's so many fun facts, but I'm trying to pick one. But I read, I read this uh, one book and this story about this um, this octopus who escaped from his tank in his owner's house, and he was able to like walk 
you know, like 80 feet before he got to the water. And I'm like, how did you survive that entire time out of what? I don't understand. <laughs> oh my goodness. And they have eight legs or arms, mm -hmm. right? They have, yeah, they have eight tentacles. Uh, and they, and so that's the thing too on their, their, their little suction cup things that are on their tentacles. That's how they like feel and see. And if so, when they, if you ever meet an octopus in person and they put their tentacle around you, that's how they're seeing you. And they can actually tell what you're feeling that way. Like if you're, you know, scared, maybe they'll tell that and they'll change colors depending on how you feel. It's so crazy. Octopuses are so cool. Oh my goodness. Do you have, is that one of your pets? You got an octopus? I, want, I really want one, but that, that's, I need a whole like big tank set up. I, that's a lot of investment. Oh, they, I'll get there when I get there. They, they are that huge? Yeah, well, the Great Pacific Octopus, that's that's the biggest one. They have, like, smaller little baby ones, but you they still need a lot of room. And and it's, yeah, it, they're, they are a big invest. I'll get there one day, but it's just not today. <laughs> it's not today, but we get in there. Was, <laughs> oh, my goodness. I actually seen someone, like, eat one. Have you ever tasted an octopus? I, I have. They're pretty good. <laughs> I feel bad saying that. You know, because I love them so much, but I'm like, they are also really delicious. Oh, you know them too well. You know them too <laughs> So cool. And you don't learn about, about octopuses so often like that. Oh, yeah. No, it's like, I feel like people just don't talk about marine life unless they're like really interested. Like, I've never come across anybody who's like, I really love octopuses, you know? <laughs> like, that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> I love the uniqueness and especially like dealing with this for the agency, how you know that as Black women, we are so unique, we are trendsetters and still like challenging others for social justice. Have you faced any pushback or have you faced anybody who's just not receptive of what you're demanding? I So not at my current company, no. Um, you know, and, and not at my other companies either. I'll, I'll say that now because if they hear this, they're going to be like, what the hell, Candace? You know? <laughs> they, they didn't do nothing to me either. <laughs> I think it was during my time of, so I was unfortunately unemployed last year for about a month because of COVID. Um, so my former agency, I, you know, I've worked there, all, I was literally like a week short of a year, you know, my year anniversary and I was looking forward to it and they're like, hey, uh, we can't afford to keep you. And I was like, that's all right. <laughs> so, that's all right. Yeah, like, <laughs> okay. so during that time, I really took it upon myself to, you know, really look for different, you know, different avenues and different companies that I never even thought about working at. And because of everything that I had was growing into as a black woman in my space, I always ask the question in interviews, like, okay, what is, what's the percent of women on your executive board? What's the percent of diversity at your company? Like, what are all these other things that nobody really asks about? Cause I want to know them. I want to be able to be come into this company and know that I'm going to make a difference, not just with my work, but with who I am as a person and how we're going to affect change for like our diverse staff. Right. And unfortunately a lot, of, not a lot of times, but sometimes I actually was, you know, not moved on. To another interview because they you know they give the standard line of you know we don't think your ideals really fit what we're looking for i'm like mm -hmm, okay mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. <laughs> you know and it was it was heartbreaking because it was like it i get it i understand it because there's most of the companies i was applying for were a lot of startups right and they so they're small teams they don't have a lot of money like they just need somebody to do the job they don't want anybody to come in with other ideas i get that but at the same time, like that should be a staple of your company. You know, that is something that will move money and will move markets for you. And that's what you need. And if you aren't looking for that, that's a downfall in your company already. Hey, you coming out here about to be a whole blessing. <laughs> you know, like really start them up and build them and like help them out in so many different ways they can even imagine. But I see like such a huge future about how, how you're gonna have your own company out here <laughs> like stop playing with it oh man you know and people keep at saying they're like oh you should start your own company i'm like i am 24 i'm not starting any company anytime soon no but having that experience you you have right now it's just only a matter of time it will happen. It is on my bucket list, but that is that is long down. That's when I get my octopus in a few years. You know, <laughs> that ain't right now. <laughs> I love that that 
bitch, you really trust God's timing. You like, it's no rush out here. Cause you know, in this, the, the role of a CEO, because as you know, being millennial, like the coolest thing is to like be a boss now. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they, they showing this, the glitz and glam, but they don't understand about like the true role of a CEO. What's your thoughts about that? It is a lot harder than they make it look, you know, they, they make it look really seamless and easy and just like oh yeah I just have these ideas you know just here here we go but behind the scenes it's like I don't even know what I'm doing I'm like you don't know what you're doing I don't know what I'm doing like we need to figure it out <laughs> you know and I think that's the best thing about my CEO now is that he'll admit openly he's like I have no idea what I feel about this what are your thoughts you know he'll ask me he'll ask anybody and that's how he gets, that's how we have all the success that we have is because he doesn't rely solely on his own mind. It's the team. Mm -hmm. It's a team effort. You know, as the saying goes, teamwork makes a dream work. Like that's what it is. We do. And, and the fact that you can really be so humble and just be like, hey, I don't know. Like <laughs> yeah. that is power in that being vulnerable like that. Yeah, that is definitely true. I mean, I worked with one of my past clients was the same way. She was a... Um, an Asian woman, you know, and she had get, was given the role of CEO at like 27. She was like, I don't know what I'm doing, you know, but she felt that she had to because everybody was relying on her to know. And then she finally realized, like, she's like, I need to take a step back and just tell everybody, like, look, I've never been a CEO. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, what are your ideas? What do you guys think? How should I be leading this company? And now that company's like, two billion in revenue like you know all because of her two minds is better than one all of our mm -hmm. minds come together so much better and when everybody plays a role because we can all lead in our own individual way we can we are all leaders so knowing that and just being able to work as a group is incredible exactly and that i mean and that leads into that point you know giving everybody a seat at the table and not a, not a seat in the back you know everybody's at an equal round table mm -hmm. ain't no sides or nothing we all there we are all there mm -hmm. you know and everybody's voices is heard in the mm -hmm. that is incredible I love just how unapologetically black you are, especially as a black woman in the PR tech space in this field. How is that being unapologetically black? It it can it has its issues <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> you know. I mean, like I'm not gonna apologize for who I am or what I've gone through or you know what I think, right? But you gotta pick and choose your battles at the same time. Like you can't fight every battle. And that's another thing that my mom tells me all the time. Cause I'm always like trying to fight everybody on something they said. I'm like, no, you said that wrong. No, I don't like the way you said that. You know, and she's like, Candace, is it really that important? I'm like, you're right, it's not. Like I, I can let it go, you know? But the bigger things, there are things where I'm like, look, we need to, and, I, and the, the, the part about it is that you need to have those conversations, but in an educational way. And not in like, I'm yelling at you because you didn't understand this and you know, you should understand it. Like that's, that's not going to get anybody anywhere because that's the issues that we're facing. You know, people are like, well, you know, you, you're black, so you must not understand this stuff. It's like, no, just educate me. That's all I'm asking. You know, that's it. So it's just reverse, you know, flip the script. The way you said educate me, come on. <laughs> they should educate themselves on behalf of what we're going through, what we've been going through for quite exactly. a while now. That's the point, right? It's like, don't just go to me just because I'm a black woman and be like, hey, like, what do you think about this? Because you're a black woman. Like, no, mm -mm, you should have done your research first. Don't be coming to me asking me dumb questions. You're going to get a dumb answer. <laughs> <laughs> don't be saying how you be coming with the research. You be doing your research fast. Check, check come on I got the receipts exactly exactly <laughs> where do you see how the future is gonna go for 2021 especially in the workspace since you are in it you are demanding you are shifting the narratives out here what do you envision for the future yeah I mean I feel like a lot of companies and this is what's really happy to me is like I've seen so many companies just make efforts to support that like diverse staff and not just be like oh yeah we're just gonna do a diversity hire like no we are going to put in place a system where we will hire you we'll promote you we'll you know this is your career path this is your longevity at the company and that's something that nobody else has done before right or they just kind of didn't want to it was like hush hush under the carpet you know and so i really feel like a lot of these bigger companies and even small companies are going to move towards a a better understanding of how to work with 
and appreciate their diverse staff, you know? And, I, and that that's what makes me happy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Please let us know the benefits of having just a d- diverse staff in the beginning, because I know there's so many benefits that come with that. I mean, and, and so the biggest thing for me is like, especially because in PR, like we have so many different clients. As I told you, I work in so many different verticals of, of tech, you know? and. You know, not all of them are owned or owned and operated by, you know, people of not of color. You know, there are a lot of people of color that are owning these companies and running these companies. Uh So if we don't have a diverse staff to support our diverse clientele, then we're not going to get the best ideas out there. We need that. And that goes for even like a big company that doesn't have clients, right? Like a Johnson & Johnson, like all of their consumers and customers are different people of color. So you need different people of color on your staff to understand how to market to those consumers. So important. So what's the best strategy, especially like marketing wise? Cause you, you, you a whole psych major to really get in the (laughs) psych, the psyche of ones to really feel connected to Mm -hmm. the product. So the first thing falls on the marketer, right? Like you have to know what, what product is going to work for what person. Like I, you know, I'm as a black woman, like, I don't want to be seeing, you know, like perm stuff. Like I don't want to get my hair permed. Like I, I love my curly hair. You know, I don't want to be no, I don't want any of that. <laughs> you know? <Literally. laughs> so, <laughs> I love my natural hair. That's, that's For real? Really, it really starts with the company. Like what product are you gonna make? Right. And you may have to make sure that that product can either if you want it to sell everywhere, then you need to make it accessible to everyone. So it has to be the right price. Cause right, because there's some, you know, communities that are lower income. So you can't put something on the market that's like $30 because they can't afford it, right? So you need to like market it as best as you can to the specific areas that you're going into. Being so considerate, especially like everybody's not balling. Like you see everybody's excited exactly. about 1400 STEMI check. Like <laughs> I'm like the government just 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 playing with us at that point. Uh-huh. <laughs> like just playing with us because people are so excited by just just that amount. So I can only imagine like what really people are going through overall during this whole crisis. Yeah, exactly. I mean that, and that's just something that's so crazy right now. Like, I mean, even during my unemployment, which is funny because I was making more during my unemployment than I was at any point. <laughs> Come on. Job. Literally. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, stay on unemployment. <laughs> I like where this is headed. You know? Yeah. So how did you like handle that space, that time of being unemployed and like losing your one source of your source of income, your job? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, it was hard, honestly. Like I, I was not prepared to get that news. I was not prepared to, you know, be unemployed. I thought I was going to be working at that company for another couple of years, you know? Uh, I was all happy. Everything was good. Um, And so once that unemployment hit, I just immediately just switched my brain. I was like, okay, we got to start looking for a job. Like literally the very next day I was doing interviews. Like I was like, we need to. And that's the thing too, is like a lot of people who are young, especially my age or younger, they don't, they don't understand how the, like so many different ways you can network and reach out to people. Like I, I sent so many emails that like didn't make any sense to a bunch of CEOs of different companies and like, and they got back to me saying that, you know, maybe I'm not a great fit for that position, but they, they, they heard me, right. They saw my email and they wanted to reach back out to me. And I, the, I love this example, so I'm going to give it, but um, I was, I was looking at this company called Box and it's a, it's a pretty big company in San Francisco, like comparable to the likes of Salesforce and stuff like that. Um, and I found the CEO and I didn't know he was the CEO before I emailed him. <laughs> I thought he was just some random person. I was like, oh, he's just some random dude. So I'll just email him. And I looked on his Twitter account and it said that he loved the, the band ABBA. And I was like, oh, I love ABBA. Like I love Mamma Mia and all those songs. So I tailored my entire email around like ABBA songs wow. <laughs> and just sent it to him. And he was like, you really love ABBA. I was like, so do you. So let's talk about getting me a job. Let's do that. <laughs> you know? We're here with it. Like we're here. Exactly. <laughs> that is so genius. And we are really like one email away to changing our whole life. That I mean, and that's the biggest thing, you know, and even... And even so when I wasn't worried about my own, like trying to, you know, get my career back on path, I was helping, you know, other people in the community. So I signed up with the Hire Black Initiative. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but the um, 
the initiative calls to um, hire, promote, and um, reskill a hundred thousand Black women. So I saw that and I was like, first of all, can y'all get me a job? Second of all, how can I be a part of this? Wow. <laughs> how was that? That sounds so meaningful. It it was the best, and we had um, we had our first conference last October. Um, and it was like, I, and I know a lot of people talk about virtual conferences these days and like, you know, some people, they just don't know how to run a virtual conference. Like they don't get it. <laughs> it's just, everybody's all choppy and yeah. nobody's on time. It's just, it don't work. But this one, it was so smooth and everybody had such important things to say. It was really, really good conference. Candace, this was so much fun. This was it was so, fun. so, so fun. Thank you so much, Tara. I appreciate you. How can we get connected with you and just stay on this path with you? Yeah, I mean, I am available um, on LinkedIn, Candace Joy Rucker. Um, I'm on Twitter. I don't know what my handle is, but it's probably Candace Rucker. <laughs> And I would love for you to just leave us off with some wisdom so we can keep this same momentum and enjoy this journey that we're on. Some wisdom, my last piece of wisdom I have to offer is to always keep advocating for change. Always. There's always something that can be changed, especially if, I mean, if it's just even a tweak to a product, if it's messaging, if it's your staff, anything, always fight that fight. Because if you don't do it, then nobody else will. That was powerful. You just like us <laughs> always. Come on, it's always room to change, baby. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Candace, so much for the wisdom, the knowledge, your energy. Like you got me out here <laughs> cheesing, so geeked up. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you too, girl. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you, Take the Lead listeners, for tuning in, tapping in, and we're going to meet you at the top.